I'm closed. Ah. Uh, Just taking it loose there. There you go. There you go. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. We're talking motorcycles today. This is probably the oldest motorcycle we've had on the website. This is a 1912 Indian single cylinder with uh, kind of an amazing story. The young man that owns this, Alex Trepanier. I met him a long time ago. In fact, here we go. That was him when I first met him, sitting on this very bike. Well, now it's about 26 years later. And he rode this bike on the Cannonball, which is 3,000 miles from the East Coast all the way across the United States on a single cylinder, one speed, four horsepower motorcycle. And he just came off the cannonball. He pulled into my garage. It's still got all the dust and dirt on it from the 3,000 mile trip. Alex, come on in, buddy. Good to see you. Hey, Jay, good to see you again. Thanks yes, for having it's, me. It's been a while since uh, this picture was yeah, there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really funny. Good, good thing we've kept in touch since then. Yes, it is, it is, it is. And uh, this was your dad's bike, right? Yeah, yeah, my dad bought this bike in uh, uh, about 1962. Okay. And uh, he, he rode it around for a while and then it kind of got put in storage and uh, um, we had gone on several tours and stuff, and I guess, you know, this picture, my mom had caught me on one of the car tours. I guess I wanted to sit on it, so it started a long time ago. And what did he pay for this in 62, do you remember? He, he bought three Indians, and he paid 650 for three of them, and he sold two of them for the 650, and he kept wow. this one. He thought he was robbing the bank. Well, well I'll give you double that for it right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I bet you would. <laughs> yeah, no, these, I see, these are probably sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Yeah, yeah, they're getting up there, and, and you know what, the, the thing that, uh, really intrigues everybody about this bike is that it's so original yeah and, and there's so many guys out there that are taking a motor you know and building them up because that's that's all that's left anymore and i can't knock them for doing it but it's really cool to have one that where you can say original wheels original carburetor original spark plug mag mag drive all you know everything yeah. is stock it really is something. So. and you know 1912 that, that was the heyday for indian actually that's that when was they her were the largest yeah, yeah their largest production year was 12. in 1912 so. they had uh, 1,200 dealerships. Yeah, that's... They had them across the United States. They had them in Europe, in Australia. In fact, I understand, uh, I think in 1911, they went to went to the Isle of Mon and got first, second, and third place yeah. and won the race. Well, Indian's always been better than Harley. What can I say? Well, well, we'll get into that now. Here you go. Now the comments will start, and you'll be, you'll be beaten to death. But, uh, there was a twin in 12, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Indian okay. actually had twins as early as five. Right, okay. So, That's and see, Harley, you know, they were real late, 11. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, right, they were... right. And there are a lot of cool things about these motorcycles that uh, people forget when they restore them, but when they're original, you see what we're talking about, like these. Yeah, the Rough Rider grips. Now see, most people think you ride this motorcycle like this, but you get that bone shaker thing going. The idea is when you're riding, you're supposed to bring your hands back onto this rubber, you see, and that would take the pounding out of your shoulders over long journeys. Oh, it and, did. And you went 3,000 how many miles in this thing? 3,308 3, miles. I, I can't say I got a perfect score. Yeah. Uh, I, I did miss some miles. I, I lost a bunch of spokes in the rear wheel. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, um, one of the valve pockets exploded one day. Yeah. So I ended up doing a, a little over 3,000, probably 3,100 and some miles. And, so. and, but safe to say, you were probably riding this flat out, right? Flat, yeah, pretty close to Which it. Which is I about, mean, what, 40, 45? 40, yeah. It, it, it liked between like 38 and 42. Yeah. Just depending on the grade and what it was. But I know that doesn't seem like much. Back in 1912, there were no paved roads. You're oh, no. Dirt roads, so you probably was, went 20. Yeah, so that, was, yeah. so that was really revving it quite, quite, sure. quite a bit. Um, yeah, I like you say, it's all original. Got the horn right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, get, that'll just annoy people out of the way. Oh, of course. Else. <laughs> so what did you do? Did you truck it back east so, and then so, drive uh, it across? So uh, a buddy of mine actually up in Santa Cruz, Doug Feinsod, he's another motorcycle guy, he, uh, he actually really helped me out on this event. Um, he, he volunteered to carry the bike from Santa Cruz back there. So I just flew on Where's the plane. Where's there? Uh, we, we took off in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Oh, so, right. Really? Right yeah. from ocean to ocean? Yeah. Huh? So, so a, a bunch of these guys in the Cannonball, they went up to Davenport, Iowa, to the big motorcycle show, went to Davenport, and then went directly to Atlantic City from Davenport. So we left uh, Atlantic City, you know, right from uh, one of the big casinos, and uh, we took off. We went uh, 
uh, New Jersey, through Pennsylvania, through West Virginia, um, uh, Indiana, you know, Kansas, Missouri, kind of, we zigzagged. The, the whole goal was to stay off of the main roads. And so how many quarts of oil did you use a day? I was burning like five quarts of oil a day. Five quarts and, a day, because yeah. this is total loss. Oh, it's it? total loss. And it's, uh, yeah. as you can see here, I brought one of the pistons. Just two. Well, there's only one piston. There's only, yeah, one, <laughs> one of the pistons. Yeah. <laughs> um, two compression rings, no oil ring. Yeah, okay, that's so, right, because the oil splashed up. When that you was used the to idea, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which used to lubricate it. And but look at that, just a perfectly flat piston. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. nothing special, you know. Yeah. And uh, what I loved about that, you know, and a lot of these guys are, are really uh, adamant about, uh, you know, modernizing these bikes, putting aluminum piston, oil rings. I don't care for that because the cast iron piston and the cylinder expand and contrast at the same rate. Right. And these guys would seize motors and the, you throw them away. The piston's yeah. done. You got to tear the whole thing down. Yeah. If I started to stick, I could pull over, cool it down, and take off again. Yeah. yeah. So it's like for me that that way. You know, obviously I didn't have as much power as some of those bikes and stuff, but. And this is a bike you can literally rebuild by the side of the road. Yeah, I did many times. Yeah. We had the cylinder head off and and and. Uh, a uh, few things, you know, went through the carburetor a couple of times, had to adjust the mag points, you know, there, were, there was always something to tinker with. What's the most so. mileage you did in one day, do you remember? Um, over 300. 300 in yeah, one day? Yeah, over 300. I think it was a 318 one day so we that's did. that's what, eight hours, nine hours? Eight ride. hours of solid on, on, wow. the, on the bike. And see, the, the problem with like, I was a class one bike. Right. Um, the problem with that is uh, there just wasn't enough time in the day, so like I, I would skip lunch. What I would do is I'd go into the gas station on one of my fill-ups and I'd grab a Slim Jim or something right. and then just go right through. Because if I stopped at, at the lunch stop, I was behind. I didn't get in on time and get all my points. And what kind of gas mileage were you getting? Probably 50 miles to the gallon. Oh, well, that many? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Because, you know, it's, it's got that stock soup can and it's a one-cylinder, so right. it, it really doesn't burn the gas. And it's one speed, right? Single speed, yeah. Yeah, it has a clutch. Right. And uh, the poor clutch here, you know, it's all taped up. The uh, the clutch that that clutch. It's a hand clutch. Yeah, it's a hand yeah. clutch. But this uh, this housing bolts to the bottom of the tank, and it started vibrating so much that it was making the tank leak. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, so we took the gas tank apart and we fixed leaks. And then another time, it started cracking on the top here. We had to take it apart and fix it again. You know, everything. You don't realize the vibration. Sure. The, the thing was just shaking, shaking, shaking the whole time. And obviously, no front brakes. No front brakes. I just have that one single rear brake right here. Yeah, right. right. And uh, you know, that that was everyone was. Uh, kind of scared for me, but we made it happen. And this is kind of cool. What do we have here? This is your map. This is right? our map box. Okay. So, so that would tell us where to go. You know, you you turn the wheels there, and it would. Now, it why would is rotate. it not turning? When well, it's it, it's spooled up. You got to oh, turn it a little oh, more. I see. So, it's yeah. a, so it's a, it turns, and then it tells you. It's just like the old days, you know, because we we actually weren't allowed to use any GPS or right. smartphones or right. anything like that. So this was where you went, and I know there were several guys that would miss a turn and they're next thing you know they were 50 miles <laughs> yeah I was gonna so say, one guy ended up going to arkansas and arkansas wasn't even on the map <laughs> we were we were down at the bottom of one state and they ended up in arkansas and they were having lunch and they finally went back on the map and they said wait wait a minute we never turned on that street <laughs> you know the other thing that really impressed me jay is yeah. um and i got to hand it to coker tire on their yeah. tires these are the same two tires I ran all the way across the U.S. Oh, and okay. I had bought three sets of tires, planning right. on using more than them. The only thing I had to do was switch the rear to the front and the front to the rear about halfway through. Yeah, because the front tire doesn't really it wear didn't, out. It didn't, you know, uh, about... No break. There's yeah, no about break uh, uh, seven days into it, I'm looking at it. It still had the, the nipples on the top of the tires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, wow, that was cool. So, But the rear, it definitely wore because all your weight, you know, I'm sitting right on the rear. Right. The cylinder is facing to the back. You got your stuff in your box. So the rear is what really now, took the beating. Even your box is a period piece, yeah. isn't it? It says... <laughs> it's a Super X uh, uh, rifle uh, oh, 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 I mean, ammunition it's a... box. <laughs> okay, so what year is this box, you think? Probably around the same era, I'd guess. That's so, and but, you got uh, a little toolbox here. Yeah, this is kind of neat. and. Uh, you know, everybody was, you know, kind of making fun of me, but I, I kept a lot of the original wrenches. Like, this is the head bolt wrench. Right. And the reason why I like it is this sits down on the nut and you won't break any fins off of the head. If you okay. see the head, they, they, a lot of them have fins missing. Yeah, yeah. That's because somebody got in there with a regular wrench and hit one of the fins because they oh, tightened it a little too tight. Yeah. This one, you cannot break a fin with that wrench. Oh, very good. So, you know, I got, and then this spanner, you know, this, these are all original Indian tools that right. came with the bike. This one opens up big enough to do the, um, the exhaust nut. Now, how, so, uh, how many spark plugs did you go through? You know, I used those same uh, Mica spark plugs. I used two. 
And one of them just fouled up. It didn't break. Yeah. So it's two for the whole trip. But, but one mistake I made is I yeah. had my spark plug sitting here in the box. Yeah. And I didn't realize that the vibration of all the tools around those spark plugs, it actually wore the threads off of the plugs. Really? From the tools vibrating against wow. it. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting. So, That's a lot of vibration. Well, yeah, you just, this whole thing, you'll see when we start it up, it's, the whole thing just, vi nothing is balanced. Now, you don't well, have a kickstarter on this. No, trip. there's not. You just pedal start and right. then you, you disengage the clutch. I, the way I ride it, and I've ridden it my whole life, is I just open the compression release, just start pedaling it, and close the compression release and go. Oh, okay. That's the way I, I do it, because yeah. it's a, a single cylinder. But yeah. you can, the clutch does work, you can disengage it. It's kind of hard to actuate it right now, because it's, right, right. you know, I haven't done anything to the bike. We literally came back a couple days ago, and, and uh, you know, I'm going to go through things, you know, and fix everything. And you got some pictures of the trip. Let's oh, yeah. show those. Yeah. Yeah, we got a, a whole photo album here. Um, this is, uh, this is going over the, uh, this was called the Cannonball Bridge. And how many bikes did the Cannonball? Uh, I believe there was over 100 that registered. I believe only 93 actually did most of the race. Okay, I saw one so, guy's burned to the ground. Yeah, uh, John Pfeiffer, actually a good buddy of mine. His, his bike, on the very first day, he bought um, long range tanks and I guess they didn't quite clear the rocker arms. Oh, and a puncture. One of the rockers punctured a hole in the tank and next thing you know, hot gas on a hot engine. Wow. So That's anyhow, and they, the problem is they couldn't get the fire out is, you know, the gas kept pouring and they're, yeah. they got those little fire extinguishers that didn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, uh. So these are the clothes you wore? Yeah, the, uh... these are my, these are my clothes. I just, I, this was my example of a, of a daily attire and okay. they would be clean in the beginning of the day and this is right. what they look okay. like after. I'm so. guessing single man, are you? No. Married with three kids. Oh, you got three kids? Yeah, three kids. That. Yeah. And your wife? Wow. How yeah. about the very and you know what? I got I got to hand it of all people to my wife for taking care of the kids and and letting me go out and play. Oh yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see what we got. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to step on this and get your shirt oh, dirty. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't want to get that. Dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these are some pictures. Yeah, these are some pictures of our start. Uh, there's a uh, going through uh, the Grand Canyon there, Arizona. Um, there's a bunch of... Uh, now, did your wife happen to see this no, picture? No, 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 don't show her that one. Did your wife see this picture with the two <laughs> girls by the side of the road there? <laughs> two good Samaritans stopped to yeah, help uh, Yeah, of course, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, okay, that's very cool. Okay. Wow, here was this Grand Canyon? It, that's in Arizona. That okay. was just one of the rock formations. I happened to get hot right at the same time, so yeah. pulled over and it was a photo. This is Wolf Creek Pass. That's, a, if you read on the sign there, uh, 10,857 feet. Wow, and this climbed it okay? It did. So what I actually did was on our, we had one rest day. Um, a, a guy actually gave me an old sprocket. We cut the center out of it. We went to a farm store, and we bought a 10-tooth sprocket and lowered the gear ratio on it. Wow. So this, What this, happened here? Well, that was the intake valve. Oh, I see. It, and it broke clear out of the housing there. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it broke clear out of the housing. I just all of a sudden lost power one day. Now what is that Indian so, trophy? So actually, yeah, this was a this was my my claim to fame here. This was a this was given to me by the Cannonball. Uh, okay. This was called the Spirit of the Cannonball Award. Right, right. So I guess you know I was uh, the third youngest rider. Oh, believe it or right? not, yeah, I wasn't the youngest. Uh, there's and you're two 28. guys, and I'm 28. Yeah, there was a guy that, uh, Tanner was 23, and okay. Buck Carson is uh, uh, 26, I believe. Okay, very so, cool. So so yeah. But uh, anyhow, that was a, an award that was given to me. It's so funny. You can just so. see where the other cylinder is supposed to. Yeah, go. yeah. And the funniest part is Indians, you could put a twin in this frame. The frame is exactly the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can put a, a twin right in there, you know, uh, twin single, uh, single speed and as well. And what is that, eight horsepower probably? The it, nine is what they rated nine. it. Nine, okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why, yeah. but uh, they, they called it a nine horsepower. So. And you started just by pedaling it and just then by pull the clutch in and then the drop the... Exactly. Oh. So there is an oil pump on it. The problem I've noticed with the oil pump is after about 20 miles per hour, the oil pump can't overcome the crankcase pressure. Oh, okay. So you have to manually push the so oil you, in there. So you reach down and you pump You reach do down and you pump it. So I got it to about every two miles, I gave it a half of a pump. Oh, okay. And that, that keeps it just right. And you can tell, you know, when you got blue smoke coming out of the back of the bike, you right. know that yeah. you know that she's happy. You want right. to keep a little bit of oil. Right. But um, you could see this little uh, patch job here. Yeah. That, that, uh, that's an original factory line. And it, it looked like somebody took a hacksaw and cut it right in half one day. And all of a sudden I go to pump oil and it's all over my leg. And I'm, whoa, what happened? The line had just split. Wow. Just the, the vibration, a, a, sure. a, a you know, vibration caused it to crack right in half. Well, can I fire it up and take yeah. it for a ride? Yeah, well, of course you can. Well, let's go through the starting procedure. 
Yeah. Uh, you've tickled the carburetor. You see some gas. Here's a carburetor here. Yeah, here's a little tickler up there. You just lift up on that and let's see uh, okay. the bowl fill all and the way up. This is an intake here. Correct. Okay. And this is, uh, this opens and closes your. Yeah, here's the. This pushes up on the uh, on the exhaust lifter there to open. Okay. Let the that opens the valve. Release. That means there's yeah. no compression now. The valve Correct. is up. So, so that's when you kick, it'll be yeah, easy you, to Yeah, you start, start pedaling in, and as you start pedaling, you get the revolutions going, you close the compression you release, and it fires and off. And it starts. Okay, exactly. And you close it. This is your throttle right Correct. here. here. Okay. Correct. We're dripping gasoline, so we're about ready to go? Yeah, about ready to go. We've got the fuel on. You should be able to jump on and, and right. kick it over. Sure. All right, let's give it a shot here and see. I'll put on my helmet, my Harley Davidson helmet. This, so this might cause a clash with the people here. So you got your compression release closed. I got it. Oh, I want it open now. Well, you want to pedal it a little bit first and then open it. Well, close it a little bit more, Jay. There you go. Now, now pedal it and then close it as you go. All right. Pedal it now, close it. Give it a little gas. There you go. Well, I am exhausted. Now, now, 20 minutes of this will help you live uh, two years longer. Let's see here. Close the compression release and it should fire off now. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Give it a little gas. Give it a little gas. Oh, okay. Try it again. Close the compression release. Step one. Closed. Okay. Open it. There you go. All right. Give it a little gas. What's your gas? The oh. problem is you don't have enough hands to work everything. <laughs> Trouble is, oh, I'm dying again. Okay. Well, your best bet is to jump on it, and we push you, get you started, and then you you just you can turn the compression release when you want to slow down or stop, and then you open the compression release again. Not the throttle? No. Well, yeah, you use the throttle to give it gas and stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sure, but you you use the compression release to when you come to a stoplight or something. All right, let's the try problem that. is, is you can't work. The the biggest issue with India is you can't work the throttle and the clutch at the same time because they're on the same side. Right. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it makes it really hard. So when I put it all the way forward, I'm disengaged. It'll I'm, disengage. I'm yes. Okay. You're freewheeling. Let's Correct. try that. Okay. okay now, okay, you ready? Okay. Open the compression release. Yeah. And then close it when you're ready, and just give it a little bit of gas. Ready? Okay. Go ahead. Close the compression. Okay. It is. Close it. Close. It is. Give a little gas, close the gas, open the gas. Hold it, hold it, hold it. There you go. I'm closed. Uh, Just taking it used to. Go ahead, close the compression. Okay, give it a little gas. Not too much, just open and close it. Open it up now. I am. Close the throttle and then open it again. Open it again. There you go. Now it should go. Give it. Open it up. No? <laughs> uh, what am I doing here? There you go. There you go. Three thousand miles of this. <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Only three thousand three hundred and six miles to go. Well, as you can see. See, it's a little tricky to, once you get the hang of it, it's fun. I see one of the, first of all, I'm, I'm not used to left-hand throttle. So yeah, it's all crazy. backwards. And, and that, it, that was one of the downfalls is Indian having the, the clutch and the throttle yeah. on the same and side. And plus you're also backwards. either wide open or shut. Now that's shut and that's open. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, once we got going, you're fine. Every time sure. I slow down, you're running into trouble. Yeah, you're running into yeah. trouble together. That was the nice thing about the cannonball is we were wide open for a long time. Yeah. And it, 
you, you didn't have to adjust a lot, but I going to you, the town. I did uh, two miles in this, and I'm exhausted. So, 3,308 <laughs> miles. Alex, congratulations, my friend. It's good to see young guys getting into this old stuff. Because usually it's old guys like me that are kind of crazy, but it's nice to see there are insane young people as well. So, Alex, yeah. thanks for bringing this by, and congratulations Thank on you. Uh, doing the cannonball. It, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. See you guys next week. I hope you like this one.